ache, so I ask uh, one of us to prepare and uh, preach today. And I thank God and thank Him for being uh, a Boy Scout, always ready. So I would like to call our preacher for today, Brother Mon. Let us all stand and let us come to the Lord in prayer, po, since we already have read our text. Let's pray, Panginoon, kami po ay nagpapasalamat for this given time that once again we were able to worship you. Thank you, Lord, for the Sunday school that we had. Thank you, Lord, for the book of Nehemiah and also for the people that we saw there who had a mind to work. Thank you, Lord, for all the things na, that uh, we are studying for the betterment of this church. We know, Lord, that this is not a perfect, perfect church, Lord, because there is no such. But we believe, Lord, that this is the right church, and this church is the right kind of church that you are purging. I pray, Lord, that uh, you will give me wisdom as I, as I speak to your people. And I pray, Lord, that each and every one of us will be convicted, Lord, we will be reproved, rebuked if need be, so that, Lord, we will be able to, to become the Christians you want us to be. Help us all, Lord, to... To always do your will in our life. Bless this day, Lord. Also this afternoon, I pray, Lord, that you will be the one who will be glorified in our midst. All these things I ask, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I'd like to thank our pastor for giving me this opportunity to preach the word. So we already um, read our text, and it's on Second Timothy chapter 4. Actually, I asked Brother Deo to read all, all the chapter, uh, all the verses on this chapter, but the, the gist of this preaching will will be from verses one to eight only. But um, let us try to to meditate meditate upon this word. So, to give you a short background, this book was written when Timoth when Paul was about to be killed. He doesn't know, maybe. When he was writing this text, maybe tomorrow is the time when his life will be taken by King Nero. And we know that Emperor Nero was one of the wicked rulers by his time. And so this book uh, gives a significant, significant message, not only to Timothy, but also to the church nowadays. Now, do not get me wrong that, that, that this book is only intended for men. Since this book is intended for Timothy, we have to acknowledge that Timothy is a picture of every one of us. Every one of us who's given, who was given charge to preach the word of God. Now, this is the last book written by Paul. This was his dying words to his son in the faith, Timothy. And if a person is about to die, every word that he says is important. I mean, it is not just important, but... but the fact that we have to do something about it, and that is to take heed of those messages that this dying person is saying. And this is what we can see in the life of Timothy. Now, it's a good thing that Paul had Timothy in him. It's a good thing that Paul, before he died, was able to, to have a disciple who was willing to pursue what Paul started. Paul knew that having a disciple is necessary. That's why when we go to our outreaches, let us not cease doing what we're supposed to do and what we are called for to do. Because someday, somehow, we will go back to our places. And if we are not able to disciple at least few of them, then who's going to take care of those people that we are ministering? Kaya nga po mga kapatid, yun, hindi na nakates, nagtagalog na. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, we have to always be realistic. And be prepared that someday, somehow, the Lord will also call us to another place. At yung mga lugar na ating pinagmimisteryuhan ay hindi dapat matenga, kundi yung dapat magpatuloy sa kaparaanan ng Diyos. He was charging Timothy because he knew that Timothy was worthy to be trusted. You know what? I believe that though Timothy was very, was, was very young at age by this time, I believe that he was one of the people that Paul uh, gave trust to by this time. And it's not about your age, mga kapatid. It is not about our capacity or ability. 
It is about our commitment to the Lord. Kaya nga yung pinopoint out ni Brother John about faithfulness was was an important factor for a Christian to pursue on what he is called for. Faithfulness. At makikita natin yung sa buhay ni Apostle Pablo. The fact that he finished what he started. The fact that he was able to finish his course. And not only that, the fact that he was able to train such a person like Timothy. It's good that there are able people in the church who can take the place of others when needed. Amen? And you know what? Kung merong mas mahalagang bagay, I'm not I'm not depriving or hindi ko minamaliit ang ibang mga ministry, mga kapatid. But if there is one ministry na dapat natin pagtuunan ng pansin, that is the ministry of evangelism. That is the ministry of evangelism. Magandang may mga umaawit sa unahan, magandang may mga Bible study, magandang may meron tayong exhortation. But ang mga bagay na yun magiging imposible without evangelism. Sapagkat saan kakukuha ng mga tao ang gagamitin ng Panginoon unless you evangelize them first. That's why going back through this book of 2 Timothy, let's have, mag- magkaroon tayo ng konting kaalaman uh, from chapter after chapter. In chapter 1, Paul acknowledged the goodness of God in the life of Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 to 6, let us, call, let, let, let us see how Apostle Paul acknowledged the goodness of God in the life of Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou wast stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. So you see how Paul acknowledged Timothy. By means of what? By means of remembering him. In what? In prayer. You see, when the Bible speaks about remembrance, it always speaks about prayer. Anong ganda that each and every one of us has someone to pray to. Maybe they're not asking. Maybe these people around us are not asking for our prayers. But the fact is that they need it. And me, my concept is I would rather pray for them than them, being, than, than, than them praying for me. I mean, I'm not saying na hindi ko kailangan ng prayer nila, pero mas maganda ng ako yung nananalangin sa kanila. Which is, I'm doing my part to glorify God. Amen? When was the last time that you thank God for each and every one of us here? When was the last time that you kneel down to God in prayer just to appreciate each and every one of us here? I know that we have our own differences. We, we came from different, ch- different churches, but those things must not hinder us to pray for each and every one of us. Magkakaiba tayo. Minsan nagtatalo-talo. Minsan may mga hindi pagkakauna-una, pagkakauna-unawaan. Pero ito ba mga bagay nito ang titigil sa iyo upang hindi mo ipanalangin ang kapatiran mo sa Panginoon? And Paul did that. Paul always mentioned Timothy in his prayer. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verses 8-10. to 10. Anong charge dito ni Apostle Paul? Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world Began. Paul's exhortation and encouragement to Timothy, reminding him how powerful the God whom they're serving is. I don't know kung what kind of encouragement pa ang pwedeng tanggapin ni Timothy, knowing that the God whom they are serving is a powerful God. Amen? Amen. Kaya nga sabi ni Apostle Paul, For I am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against that day. For I am persuaded. Amen? Amen. Now in chapter 2, Paul encourages Timothy to constancy and perseverance in his work. Pagpapatuloy sa kanya pong ginagawa. In verse number 1 of chapter 2, sabi po dito, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So, chapter 1, acknowledgement kay Timothy sa kabutihan ng Diyos sa buhay ni Timothy. Chapter 2, makikita naman natin dito yung encouragement. 
sa pagpapatuloy and for perseverance in Timothy's work. Be thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Verse number two. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. You know what? Kung ito'y hindi ginawa ni Paul, where do you think Timothy is? If Paul did not commit those things na tinanggap niya mula sa Diyos, where do you think Timothy, Titus are? Kaya nga yung discipleship is one factor that really affects the church. Ang, ang, ang mahirap sa mga churches ngayon, madami tayong evangelism program. So all winning dito, tracks distribution. Well, I'm not against with those things. But the problem is after that, asan yung resulta? Asan yung discipleship? Kaya nga, hindi natin pwede sabihan na yung mga taong yung naligtas without you following them up. Kaya nga dito sa Cambodia, although it is hard, talagang pabalik-balik lang tayo. Turo, turo, turo. The, the last camp that we had, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, actually, I asked Pastor Srim Sara to, to have an extra or exclusive uh, session with, with the people from Tacos. Why? Because I saw the, the necessity of hearing them the clear presentation of the gospel. And then when I came back yesterday, okay, uh, what did you learn? I asked them. I, I learned that Jesus is the Savior. Sabi nila. But they, have, they, they, they had a problem because their parents are, are somehow persecuting them. Their parents told them that you cannot go to Pagoda if you believe Jesus Christ. That you cannot go to Pagoda anymore if you believe Jesus Christ. So that's another problem arising in our place. And will that hinder us? Of course no. Why? Because this is where God called us to do. To minister to them. Verse number three of chapter two Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Well, our service must not depend on our comfort, it must always depend on our conviction. It must not depend on our feelings. Ano sabi, san hinilan tulad si Timothy dito? Be thou therefore. Oh, sorry, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. And a soldier, we all know what a soldier uh, uh, went through be, be, before that soldier becomes a soldier. Okay, he went through many trainings and, and hardship in life. And this is what Paul is trying to tell Timothy, that, that being an evangelist, being a young preacher is not easy for you and will not be easy to any of us. Kaya nga, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse number 8, this is the great encouragement of Apostle Paul. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. You see, kung ang Diyos na pinaglilingkuran ni Timothy and Paul did not come back to life, do they have any reason to continue ministering? Of course, they would not have. But because the God whom they're ser serving died and rose up after three days, then their preaching is not in vain and their faith is not in vain. Nagkakaroon lang naman ng kabuluhan ng ating mga ginagawa when the founder of our belief is a living founder. Allah founded Islam. We all know that. He died and he never came back to life. And we, 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 we know a lot of religious founders na minsang na, 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 namatay but they, didn't, they, they were not able to come back to life. So the greatest encouragement is in verse number 8. Amen? Verse number 10, chapter 2. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. You see, how much do we have to endure for this elect's sake? May nakakausap ako, hindi ko napapangalanan. Pero kasama ko sa bahay. Pero, pero hindi siya babae. Sabi niya, why would I do soul winning knowing that 
those people are already elect. He even told me that I will just let I will just let other people to win them. And what I told him, what I what I told him is this: Why would you allow other people to be used by God instead of you using Him? Bakit hahayaan mong yung ibang tao pang gamitin para maligtas yung mga elect? Amen? Kung ikaw naman sa sarili mo pwedeng gamitin ng Diyos. Amen? Kaya minsan ang mga, ang mga kaisipan talaga natin, medyo, ang utak natin kulang sa hangin eh. Sometimes, our brain is lacking of, of air. <laughs> of wind. That's why it's malfunctioning. <laughs> Amen? Sometimes it's like that. Okay? So another another encouragement of, Tim, uh, of Paul to Timothy, verse number 15. Study to show thyself a proven to God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? You know why in chapter 2, Paul um, laid down a lot of encouragement to Timothy? Because we're going to proceed to chapter 3. Chapter 3 speaks about the perilous time. It speaks about the last days. That Timothy was actually facing, was already facing by this time. So we all know in verse number 2 and ver uh, until verse number 6, okay, uh, these are the characteristics of, of those people that uh, will be living in the perilous times. Okay, and this... Uh, uh, and in verse 7, it says here that ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, there would be people who are actually ever learning, yet never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Why? Because these people in the first place are not really saved. They're just learning. They're just learning. They're just accumulating. They're just know what the Bible is. But, but never in, in their life, na naunawaan nila ang salvation. That's why they keep on learning, natututo lang, magaling, magaling makipag-debate, magaling, magaling sa, sa Biblia, magaling gumamit ng Biblia. Pero hindi naman talaga ligtas. Actually, let's go to verse number 8. Now as Janus and James Bress withstood Moses, so do this also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Now, J Janus and James Bress were, were believed that these were the sorcerers hired by Moses, ah, hired by Moses, hired by Pharaoh to perform such miracles. Remember when, when Moses and Aaron um, met Pharaoh and then they, they were able to turn their staff and rod into a serpent? So these were the sorcerers that Pharaoh used and hired to perform such miracles. So what can we see here? Now, these are people who actually resist the truth. Not only that, these are people, these are people that, that can even also uh, perform miracles. Yet, they are not of God. What am I driving here? What I'm saying here is that madaming mga Kristiyano, alam ang Biblia, nagtuturo ng Biblia, Kumbaga, nakakapag-perform din ng miracle sa panahon ni na Moses. But they are not of God. They are even Christians who are trying to destroy the faith by pretending that they are of God when they are not really. Amen? And we should be, we should have uh, discernment to know who these people are. Amen? Because uh, unless otherwise, we will be deceived. At sayang ang mga natutunan natin. If uh, sa isa, isa, isang kisap mata, mawawala lahat ito because uh, we have been deceived. Okay? But the Bible promised in verse number 9. Okay? That though there are people like Janus and Jane Bress, but in verse number 9, but they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also 
was noon bilib na bilib tayo kay ganito. Amen? But then, dumating ang panahon that these people were manifested from whom really they are. Noon, ang galing mag-preach, ang, galing, ang ganda ng simbahan, kilalang pastor. Pero because we opened the Word of God and we studied the Word of God, then naunawaan natin kung sino ba talaga itong mga taong ito. Kasi hindi lahat na nagsasabing sa Diyos ay sa Diyos. Amen? Well, ma- madaling tumayo sa unahan, madaling mangaral, madaling uh, magtayo ng sariling lupo ng mga mananampalataya, but the question is, are you really of God? Amen? Are you really of God? Madaming churches sa Pilipinas na pwede mong puntahan, but the question is, are those churches really of God? Verse number 14. Paul said, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. You see, kahit nung panahon ni Paul and ni Timothy, yung testing mindset at ay nandun na. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Hindi mo lang natutunan kundi yung sinigurado mo. Amen? Kaya nga, we are very privileged and blessed that we are in a church. Okay? That encourage each and every one of us to really study the Word of God. And if, then if we have any question, then we can all, always bring it up here and discuss it according to the Scriptures. Because not all churches do that. Amen? So let us go to our main uh, text. 2 Timothy chapter 4. In chapter 1, Paul acknowledged Timothy. In chapter 2, Paul encouraged Timothy to perseverance and consistency in his work. In chapter 3, Paul warned, okay? Paul warned Timothy about the perilous times. In chapter 4, Paul charged Timothy. Ano yung charge ni Timothy? Actually, our, ti- our title or our topic today is Paul's charge to Timothy. Verse number 1 and verse number 2. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead that is appearing in his kingdom. Verse number two, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So what can we see here? We can see here the significance of preaching, the importance of preaching. Paul was charging Timothy because he knew how important his office was. Okay, how important the office as an evangelist was. I mean, in, in Ephesians chapter 4, if I am not mistaken, it was told there that, um, it was said here that, uh, and, and he gave some apostles and some pastors and some evangelists and some preachers and teachers. For what purpose? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Kaya nga po mahalaga yung office na ibinigay kay Timothy. And that office is to become an evangelist. 1 Corinthians 9.16 1 Corinthians 9.16 Let, Let's see uh, kung anong attitude ni Paul sa, 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 sa kanyang office. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me, yeah, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Sa abang ako kung hindi ko ipapangaral ang ebanghelyo. Para bang sinasabi ni Apostol Pablo dito, anong, anong kahabag-habag ako, anong, anong kaawaan meron ako kung hindi ko ipapangaral ang Ebanghelyo. Kaya huwag tayo magmamalaki. Soul winning, outreach, ay sila na lang. Hindi na ako pang ganyan level. Pang ganyan uh, level ko kasi, pang special number. Yung pang napapalakpakan. No! Every one of us is mandated to preach the gospel. Philippians 1, 23-24. Ito ha, tama ha. For I am in straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. 24. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Why? Because Paul has still something to, to tell them, has still something to teach them. So to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Though Paul has the willingness to go to God, but to abide in the flesh is more needful for them. Why? Because Paul has something to tell them. 
Paul has still a purpose and that purpose is to what? Is to minister to them the word of God. Kaya nga mga preacher, uh, I, I believe na ang office natin ay hindi basta-bas ng office. Napakahirap ingatan. Minsan nga, may gagawin ako, iisipin mo muna, oy preacher ka. Dapat hindi kanyan. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Romans 10:13. Uh, ang pinapakita po natin dito yung significance of preaching, ha? Romans 10.13 Ang sabi po dito, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us go to verse number 14. Paano malilitit sa mga taong to? How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how they shall hear without a preacher? How these people will come to repentance without hearing the clear presentation of the gospel. How these people will come to, to faith in God when, when we are not doing what we're supposed to do and that is to preach the gospel. So preach the word. Amen? Preach the word. If you're not a preacher, preach the word. Hindi ko sasabing tumayo ka dito kung babae ka po. Ang sasabi ko, you preach the word. Because the moment you got saved, you have a story to tell. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-aral pa ng kung ano-ano. Just preach to them the plain, the simple word of God. Amen? Preach the word, mga kapatid. Romans 10, uh, sorry, Romans 10, 17. Ang sabi dito, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So nakita natin is yung the significance of preaching. Under that, letter B, makikita po natin dito yung the seasons of preaching. Kailan ba dapat ipangaral ang salita ng Diyos? Verse number 2 of chapter 4, preach the word be instant in season, out of season. Kaya nga, preaching must be our lifestyle. It must be done anytime, anywhere. Sang dako ka man naroon, if you have the opportunity, preach the word. Anumang occasion, kasalan, preach the word. May patay, preach the word. Birthday party, preach the word. Sa anumang kaparaanan, let's preach the word. Sa Florida, we have our Christmas party. Then use that opportunity, use that occasion to preach the word. Amen? And preaching should not be based on our feelings or on our circumstances. When it seems like walang nagiging resulta, you preach. Parang walang nagiging bunga, you preach anyway. Because you're not doing this for people. You're doing this for God. And mamaya makikita natin yung naging motivation ni Paul kung bakit siya nag sa kanya pong ministry. Let us leave no opportunity, mga kapatid. If there's an opportunity, let us grab that opportunity to preach the Word of God. Not only the significance of preaching, not only the seasons of preaching, we will also see here the spirit of preaching. The Bible says, Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. What does it mean by reprove and rebuke? Timothy has to tell the people of their faults, whether they would be hurt or not. Amen? Amen? Tamo yung nangyari sa, sa book of Acts. When Peter preached to them, the Bible says they, they were pricked in their hearts. But eventually, these people came to repentance. Why? Because it is not our job. Amen? It is not our job to save people. It is not our job to convict people. Our job is what? It's only to preach. And that's it. Whether they would be hurt, whether they would be entertained, it doesn't matter. What matters is that we preach the Word of God. The spirit of preaching. Reprove and rebuke. Tell them what their faults are. Tell them uh, kung, kung anong status nila sa harapan ng Diyos. We should tell them 
Okay, if they are living uh, in, in ungodly way, then tell them, reprove and rebuke them. Okay, not only that, we also have to exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Timothy has to direct and courage and quicken those who began well to finish what they've started. Exhort with all long suffering. Alam nyo, madaling mag-exhort. Amen? Ang mahirap yung exhort with all long suffering. Lalo yung kung makikita mo na yung mga pinapangaralan mo parang hindi natututo, that's the time that you have to exhort with all long suffering. Amen? Kaya nga, magpatuloy lang. Amen? Magpatuloy lang. Exhort with all long suffering. Not only that, Paul charged Timothy to preach the word, Paul also charged Timothy to prepare for apostates. In verses 3 and 4, it says here, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Verse number 4, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall, shall be turned unto fables. This is the reason why we ourselves have to be equipped. Why? Because there is the surety of their coming. May kasiguruhan ang pagdating ng mga apostates. Kaya nga, kapatid, if we are not well equipped, if we are not well taught, if we are not, uh, if, if we are not uh, well deep into the word of God, then how can you face these apostates? Ang, ma- ang mahirap pa, Ang mahira pa, in verse number 4, sabi dito, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Now, fables here means what? Humanistic stories. Maraming mga Krisyano ngayon, they don't care if what being preached is the Word of God. They would just go there to what? To be entertained. With what? With fables. Pure Word of Man instead of listening to the pure word of God. Kaya nga, anong nangyayari sa mga preachings natin ngayon, I mean, hindi dito, and we praise God for that, uh, ang nagiging highlight ng preaching is yung story nila, yung illustration. Is yung testimony nila. At nauso pa nga yung salitang preachimony. Wherein the Bible is very clear to preach the word of God. I'm not saying that you don't add these things sa yung preaching. If these things will aid your preaching, then be it. Pero ang sinasabi ko, the, the preaching must be what? Must be surrounded by the Word of God itself. Kung baga, preaching, yun ang pinaka, pinaka foundation mo. And then yung stories, yung illustration testimonies, those are only scaffoldings. Yun ay mga tutukod lamang. I mean, your preaching uh, can always stand up as it is. Hindi, hindi yung word of God ang susuporta sa mga testimony mo. No. It must be always the pure word of God. Prepare for apostates. Nakakalungkot because the Bible says here that they will turn away their ears from the truth. They will grow weary of the old plain gospel of Christ and then they will be greedy of fables and take pleasures in them. Balikin natin yung verse number 3. Sabi dito, But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. We have to observe here that these teachers were of their own heaping up. Okay? And not of God's sending. Kumbaga, itong mga teachers na to, hindi ito padala ng Diyos. Itong mga teachers na to, kumbaga, nagpakita ng magandang pagkatao until such time na bigyan ng opportunity makapangaral. And then, when, the time, when that time comes, then these people will start preaching fables. Kaya nga, masakit mang isipin, masakit mang isipin, siguro, masakit mang isipin, siguro itong, itong, itong lupo ng ating itong congregation natin is somehow contaminated or was contaminated before. Because there were teachers here, okay, who made their way so that they can be able to teach others also. And that's sad, mga kapatid. And we have to take note here that those that are turned unto fables first turn away their ears from the truth. You know what, mga kapatid? 
Kapag nagsimula ng ayawan mo ang tama, then that's the time that you will slowly turn away to fables. Kaya nga, you guard yourself. Pinapanood mo. Mga preachers na pinapakinggan mo. Music na pinapakinggan mo. Magiging maingat tayo. Because these things are factors for us to be affected. Preach the word. Prepare for apostates. Number three. Paul charged Timothy to perform the duties. Verse number five. But watch thou in all things, and do afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Ano yung performance na dapat gawin? Ni Timothy here, letter A, be watchful. Paul said to, to Timothy that watch thou in all things. This somehow means that Timothy has to keep his good testimony and integrity. Para bang sabi ni Paul dito na, Timothy, I know that you're a young preacher. Kaya nga sabi ni, ni Paul kay Timothy sa chapter 2, chapter Timothy, free yourself from youthful lust. Kaya sabi ni Paul dito sa chapter 4, be watchful in all things. Or watch thou in all things. Why? Because Timothy uh, was in an office that the integrity and testimony must be kept. Kaya nga mga kapatid, we should be always watchful sa mga bagay na ginagawa natin. Amen? Huwag lang tayo mag rely sa, sa kapangyarihan ng Diyos, sa conviction ng Diyos. We ourselves should also discipline ourselves. Tama si Paul. Hindi mo tatawaran kung anong paggawa ng Diyos at kung anong presensya ng Diyos ang sumakanya. Pero sinabi niya rin sa 1 Corinthians 9.27, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Kaya may part ang Diyos sa buhay mo for you to keep from falling, meron ka din dapat part. And that is to discipline yourself. Hindi po, di pwedeng puro sa Diyos. Nakagawa akong kasalanan. O bakit? Eh, ang Diyos eh, hindi ako, hindi ako kinip from falling. No. You have your part. God has His own part. Kaya mutual dapat yan. Parehas dapat yan nagpa-function. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul, I die daily. Not only to be uh, watchful, okay, Paul also tell Timothy to be willing. Be willing to what? To endure affliction. I think I don't have to, to say a lot more of this because uh, we, we know what kind of life Paul lived okay and that is a life of sufferings and afflictions just for the sake of the gospel now not only to be watchful to be willing but Paul charged Timothy to be also working the Bible says do the work of an evangelist what I'm trying to say here is do what you are called for if you are called to be a preacher, then preach. If you are called to be a teacher in your outreaches, then teach. And you be faithful in the things, in office where you are called for. Be faithful, mga kapatid. So number one, preach the word. Number two, prepare for apostates. Number three, perform the duties. And number four, last, persist for rewards persist for rewards. In verses 6 and 8, ano sabi ni Paul dito? For I am now ready to be offered. Hey, hey. Paul said, I am now ready to be offered. Why do you think he's ready? Not only because he did what God told him to do, he's ready. Why? Because he was able to train Timothy. Amen? Those are the factors why Paul said that he's ready to be offered. Because he knew he knew na, na kapag namatay siya, mayroong taong tatayo in behalf of him. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Seven, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the fight. Oh. The faith. Di ba? Verse number eight. Henceforth, there is laid up for me... Minsan talaga nagkakamali tayo eh. Yung preaching ko kanina... 
to, to worship them. <laughs> Dapat to worship with them. Ay, yung prayer ko kanina. Dapat to worship with them. Nahiya tuloy ako nasa, boss yung, nasa unahan yung boss ko. Kanina. Kaya six dollars lang ako eh. <laughs> Ha? Kaya hindi tayo mataasan eh. <laughs> Five dollars. Okay, but anyway, verse number eight. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. You see, Paul is telling Timothy, Timothy, you persist for rewards. No, I'm not saying here na nagagawa tayo ng mga bagay na para kay Kristo just for the rewards. You know, if you, har- if you have a heart, okay, na mayroong gratitude towards God, then you would do what you're supposed to do without even considering what your rewards will be. Kahit walang rewards, gagawin mo ang dapat mong gawin. But Paul is telling here, in verse number 8, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Merong nakalan sa akin, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that also love His appearing. Persist for rewards, mga kapatid. And I, and, and, and I, I want to say that the greatest motivation is not actually the reward. Okay? It should be our love to God. Kakanta ka, what's your motivation? It must be because you love God. Even sa ating mga trabaho, tatrabaho tayo, for what? For money? Oh, then. <laughs> pero, pero it should not be the, the main issue, mga kapatid. It should be because we love God. And God put us into those schools so that we will become light to those who are still in dark places, mga kapatid. Persist for rewards. Makikita natin dito yung faithfulness ni Apostle Paul. Not only that, yung fighting na ginawa niya, yung fight na ginawa niya. The Bible says, I have fought a good fight. What kind of fight are you fighting right now? The next question is, how are you dealing with that fight? And let us see, finishing. The Bible says, I have finished my course. We've given a race, mga kapatid. Are we committed to finish it? I hope that Along the way, when troubles, trials, and these unfavorable circumstances come, I pray that we will still pursue sa ating ginagawa. I know that hindi, hindi madali, hindi madali. At talaga namang hindi madali. Pero sino ba nagsabing madali? Kaya nga, hindi madali mga kapatid. And we should always be aware that there is a God, kapatid, a living God, who called us who will enable us to do what we have to. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the message that we had. Though it is short, Lord, I pray, Lord, that uh, 